Hi, everybody. Welcome to the pre-conference Capitol Hill Meetings group leader training. I really appreciate everybody taking time out of their day to be trained like this. And also, I really appreciate all of you agreeing to be part of our Capitol Hill meetings and to lead a group up to Capitol Hill. I'm really excited about this program and I'm really excited to go back to DC and to bring all of you up to the Hill. And I think this is gonna be great with you guys at the helm. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Allie Galloway. I'm the MDF Community Engagement Manager here. And I work um, with all of our volunteers and I also run our grassroots advocacy program. So, just as a refresher, you will all be assigned a small group to take to Capitol Hill with you, and I am currently working on putting those groups together and making those meetings for you. And you as the leaders will act as their ushers and spokesperson. So you will be in charge of making sure that your small group gets through security properly and gets to your meetings on time. And then you'll also be in charge of leading the meetings once they actually begin. So here's what the morning of September 12th is going to look like. And so just as a reminder, September 12th, Friday, is the day that the conference itself begins. And at 8.30, the training will begin in the hotel. So the training will last for approximately 30 minutes, during which time participants will learn the basics of our asks and what to expect out of their meetings. So you as the leaders will need to um, board buses along with your groups, and then each of you will be attending meetings in one building only. Uh, so you'll need to make sure that you get off at the right place and that your group members are accounted for. And after that, please help everyone through security and over to their first meeting. Um, I will show a map of Capitol Hill in a moment to kind of illustrate where the meetings are, where the, the different Senate and House office buildings are. At this point, we're planning only on Senate meetings, but that could change. And I'll speak a bit about that in a moment as well. You might find yourself with some downtime uh, before or after your meetings. I'm trying to schedule them for you know, 10 o'clock, 10.30, 11 o'clock, but that may not happen quite as, um, as planned. So just if you do find yourself with some downtime, there is a cafeteria in Dirksen Senate office building where you and your group can rest between meetings and get a cup of coffee or get a snack if you want. And then everybody will be meeting in front of the Capitol steps at 11.30 for a photo. And buses will pick everybody up immediately after the photo at 11.45. So um, make sure you get to your group, make sure you get your group to the designated meeting spot in front of the Capitol at about 11.30. And so meetings should be wrapping up between about 11 and 11.15. And you should plan on at least a 10 minute walk to the front of the Capitol, if not a few minutes longer, depending on what building you're in. So as promised, here is a map of Capitol Hill. So up on the top there, you see Russell Senate Office Building, Hart and Dirksen Senate Office Buildings. And then towards the bottom, you see Rayburn, Longworth and Cannon House Office Buildings. Um, as I mentioned, at the moment, we're planning only on Senate, uh, Senate office visits. And that's to kind of maximize the amount of people who can actually meet with their senator themselves. And, um, and also it has to do with some legislation that is um, currently in front of Congress that we will be talking about in a moment. And I also just wanna point out one more thing. So the bus will be dropping people off in front of the respective buildings. So if your meetings are in Russell, the bus will drop you off in Russell. And then Hart and Dirksen Senate office buildings are actually connected. So the bus will drop you off. It's the entrance is in front of Dirksen and then you can walk between the buildings as I said, they're connected. Um, you can walk underground or the individual floors are also connected. And then the bus will pick up the corner of First Street and Constitution Avenue where that kind of star graphic is. And just so you know, the photo location at 1130 is in the front of the Capitol building. There are steps in the front and the back. The front is the iconic photo um, with lots and lots and lots of steps leading up to the top of the Capitol, but it could get a little confusing because there's also stairs in the back of the building. Um, how you can kind of tell the difference if you've never been to DC before is the back of the building is a big parking lot and that's not where we wanna get our pictures taken. You want to walk around to the front of the building which has a nice green park. So you want to go to the prettier area, not the parking lot. What to kind of expect out of the day and once you're in these meetings, each leader will get a folder to leave behind in the member of Congress's office that you guys meet with. The folders are specific to the members of Congress, to the senators, so be sure to leave the right one. They will have a letter in them, 
addressing the senator by name and it has to do with whether they've co-sponsored a bill or not. So just you, you as the leader will be given between two to three leave behind packets and just make sure that you leave the right one behind. We'll, we'll mark them clearly for you. And you may also be asked to drop off additional folders for people that we don't have meetings with. These are just sort of a meet and greet packet where you'd walk in and just say, hi, we're from the Myotonic Dystrophy Foundation. We have some information for the senator that we'd like to leave behind. And uh, we'll let you know if you have any additional drop offs. And that will only really be scheduled if we have some senators that we'd like to reach out to that you know happen to be near where your meetings are going to be. So you don't have to worry about going too far out of your way for that. So some of the materials in those leave behind packets. The first thing that you'll see in there are a copy of the Myotonic Dystrophy Foundation brochure and a copy of the Myotonic Dystrophy Family Registry brochure. Uh, and also some information on Myotonic Dystrophy and information on MDF as well. And next is an informational sheet on Myotonic Dystrophy Foundation's advocacy staff. So that includes myself, uh, our executive director, Molly White, and some of our board members. So for those of you who don't know, some of our board members include Senator Tim Kaine. He's a U.S. Senator from Virginia. Uh, we also have Woody Kessel, who is a former Assistant Surgeon General on staff, and we have several lawyers and uh, who have worked on Capitol Hill in the past and who have legislative and advocacy experience as well on our board. And so we'll have some information in there on the, the people within the organization that um, these members of Congress and their staff should contact with any questions about advocacy. And it's also just to sort of show that we have full-time staff dedicated to advocacy within the organization. Even though we're new to this arena, even though we're new to advocacy, 2014 is our first year in this, um, we want to show that we are a professional organization and we, in terms of rare disease advocacy, we are in fact a force to be reckoned with. And just because we're new uh, does not mean that we are inexperienced in this. You'll also have a letter to uh, your member of Congress containing the asks that I'll go over in a moment. And those are specific to the members of Congress. So as I mentioned before, just make sure that you drop the right packet off to the right member of Congress. Um, you'll have a list of co-sponsors for the MD Care Act, which is the bill that we are focusing on here. You'll also have a copy of the text of the MD Care Act uh, for the member of Congress to peruse. And um, you will also have a copy of speaking photo submissions. So some of you may know that we have been doing the 500 Voices campaign for the last few months, and we're trying to get 500, uh, 500 letters and submissions to members of Congress between now and the conference. And we've got over 115 so far, so we're doing really well. And I think that something like 50 members of Congress have been contacted across 30 different states. I mean, we've had a really big impact so far. And so what we're going to be doing is including a CD in those packets of um, some of the submissions that people have sent in where they've been able to take a photo of themselves and then film their voices asking that the members of Congress pass the MD Care Act and support the orphan drug tax credit. So as, your gr as group leaders, you will be leading these meetings on Capitol Hill. Most of your meetings will be with a staffer, not the member him or herself, but that's absolutely fine. Staffers typically have the senator's ear and they're the policy experts. So making a good connection with the health LA, the health aide, can be just as important as making a connection with the member him or herself. As the leader, your job is to talk first, briefly introduce the group, introduce my time dystrophy foundation. So, you know, something like, hi, we're here on behalf of the Myotonic Dystrophy Foundation to speak with you a bit about myotonic dystrophy, the most common form of adult onset muscular dystrophy. And as I mentioned before, you know, mention that we have full-time staff in San Francisco that focuses on advocacy, in addition to board members, including Senator Tim Kaine and former Assistant Surgeon General Woody Kessel, who work to ensure that advocacy is a key focus of the organization. And then you as leaders can also mention the Friends and Heroes reception from the night before. So Thursday night, we're going to have um, a reception on Capitol Hill giving awards to um, certain members of Congress who have been really important in the rare disease arena, such as Henry Waxman and Senator Amy Klobuchar, who has sponsored the MD Care Act, and Roger Wicker, who 
initially authored the MD Care Act, you know, 10 years ago. So you can mention that we've given nonpartisan awards to many members of Congress who have been involved in the rare disease arena. And you'll also have a list of the award recipients in your training materials. It's just a good idea to kind of mention this to let them know how we've been involved in the advocacy arena and that we are completely nonpartisan. I mean, as all of you know, myotonic dystrophy can affect you no matter what side of the aisle you're on. It can impact you and your family. And we just really want to get across that we're not really here um, to cause waves. We're just here to talk about an issue that really is completely nonpartisan and can affect anybody. So then next, um, you should go around the room and part participants can each briefly introduce themselves. But again, as leaders, your job is to kind of corral the speaking and make sure that people don't go off for five or 10 minutes about their personal story. This isn't necessarily the opportunity to share their story. Um, it's just an opportunity to literally go around the room and introduce your name. You know, hi, my name is Jim and my wife and son are living with DM. Constituents, um, so people who live in the district or the state itself, can briefly share their story. So, you know, maybe you're visiting a member of Congress from Wisconsin and your group contains people from Wisconsin, Virginia, and Delaware. So in that case, the people from Virginia and Delaware would just say, hi, my name is Jane, I'm living with myotonic dystrophy, or hi, I'm Joe, my son has myotonic dystrophy. Um, but the people from Wisconsin can briefly share their story. And when I say briefly, I mean maybe one to two minutes, just a couple of sentences. Um, again, we don't want to monopolize the whole time with just storytelling, but it's a good idea for the constituents to make that connection with their senator. Uh, and then you as the leader can then kind of wrap up and end with the ask and how it impacts the DM community. You'll have some talking points that you can briefly explain, um, and I'll go over the talking points in a moment, but you'll also have them in your, um, in your training packets. And just a note, you'll also have a list of everybody in your group, um, which will include a note about whether or not they're a constituent, so you can know who to ask to speak before the meeting. So, at, you know, as you're on the buses or possibly as you're waiting to speak in the lobby um, of the member of Congress's office, it's a good idea to just kind of go around the group and say, okay, so we've got Steve and we've got Joe and their constituents. So you guys, I'd like you to share your story right now. And the rest of you hang back, you'll get your chance in the next meeting. All right, so as much as we're trying, not everybody will meet with their own members of Congress. I would say 95% of the people will be, and that's why we're going with Senate instead of House meetings, is so more people can actually meet with their own members of Congress. Um, so only constituents should share their city and state and briefly share their story. So again, when you're going around introducing yourselves, you can say, my name is Joe and I'm living with DM, but if you're not a constituent, don't say, I live in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, if you're meeting with a member of Congress from Utah, because they really only care about who's voting for them. So just make sure that constituents only share their city and state and their story. And then the fun stuff, please take a group photo at the end of the meeting or an action shot of people speaking. I would love to see these and we'd love to share them. So you can post them um, to social media. You can tag us either on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, or just email me a copy of the photo and we'll post it. We'd love to see these and we'd love to be able to have those going forward. So a lot of times at the end of a meeting, you'll have an opportunity to pose with the senator or with the staffer, or the staffer can take a picture of everybody in the room or you can get a picture next to the plaque outside the door that says Office of Senator Tim Kaine, Senator from Virginia. So just as many photos as you can get during your meetings, I would love to see them. Okay, so now you know what to talk about on the day of. These are our issues in play or asks. Um, you'll also have a fact sheet on these issues in your packets to help jog your memory a bit, and I will be sending all of this information out to everybody as well, so you can have copies of this um, to kind of help jog your memory before showing up on September 12th. So the first big ask is passing the Muscular Dystrophy Community Assistance Research and Education Act, or MD Care Act. So the MD Care Act was a landmark piece of legislation that was first introduced in 2001 and it has 
transform life for many Americans impacted by nine different forms of muscular dystrophy. So in some cases, it's extended the lives of patients by up to 10 years, thanks to the research that's happened as a result of the Axe Passage. Um, it basically prioritized muscular dystrophy research within the National Institutes of Health. So the act was updated and reintroduced in 2013 to focus on cardiac and pulmonary research, which, as you all know, are issues that are very important to the DM community. Um, and it also uh, focuses on care and support for adult and transitioning populations, which, again, all of these things really are things that the DM community um, are impacted by and really important to us. Currently, um, the bill has 112 co-sponsors in the House, 27 co-sponsors in the Senate, and it is widely bipartisan. The House bill currently has 68 co-sponsors who are Democrats and 44 Republicans, and um, the Senate bill has 19 Democrats and eight Republicans or independents. So they're really widely bipartisan. These are not just Democrat or Republican issues, and it's something that everybody can get behind. So as I mentioned, it's not a disease-specific bill. It deals with nine different forms of muscular dystrophy, including DM, Duchenne, Becker, um, and uh, some of the other more common forms of muscular dystrophy. The current bill um, is actually amending the original bill from 2001, as I said, and so it's amending it with additional language prioritizing cardiac and pulmonary research. And it's not an appropriations bill and does not ask for any money. And those are important talking points to share with your members of Congress. And so just so you're aware of where we are in the legislative process for the MD Care Act, this is a quick overview of how a bill becomes a law. Uh, in June, the MD Care Act was marked up by the Energy and Commerce Health Subcommittee and reported to the full committee for further action. The bill then passed the full committee last week and moved to the House floor. Um, it's sitting on the House floor, and the expectation is that it will be voted and passed actually within about the next two weeks before Congress goes on recess. Uh, so we're sort of about midway through the process right now. So once it gets passed, it will move to the Senate for the same process, but it takes much less time once it's already been passed in one, um, in one chamber. And so then after that, the majority of both chambers must approve any revisions that have been made and then meet to reconcile the bill differences and come up with one uniform bill and pass it. And then it's sent to the president to veto or sign into law. And so we have until the end of the year to do that until the end of the 113th Congress, which ends um, in December. And then once, um, once this Congress ends, if the bill is not passed, it will need to be reintroduced and go through this whole process again. So the next issue or ask that we have in play is the 21st Century Cures Initiative. And so our ask is please support the 21st Century Cures Initiative. And this is a bipartisan effort within the House of Representatives Energy and Commerce Committee and is aimed at improving the treatment research, development, and delivery process for drugs. So MDF is a member of the 21st Century Cures Coalition and we work very closely with the Energy and Commerce Committee and the initiative's leaders, Chairman Fred Upton and Diana DeJet from Colorado, uh, and we are working with them to ensure that the DM community is considered in all aspects of this legislation. As you know, as mentioned, the goal is to modernize and reform the drug development pipeline within the U.S. And um, as we get closer to finding treatments for DM, uh, that's something that's really important. Is that not only that these drugs can be developed and put into play through clinical trials, but once they're actually made available on the market, we need to make sure that it happens quickly and effectively and that they can be made available to the most people possible. Uh, we've also submitted comments uh, to the Energy and Commerce Committee in response to the committee's white paper on the initiative and we've talked about modernizing the drug development pipeline and what that would mean for the DM community. So the committee is aware of DM, they're aware of MDF, and we're working closely with the committee right now to make sure that um, the DM community is kept in focus. So our final ask is to support the continuation of the orphan drug tax credit. So the orphan drug tax credit was first introduced in 1986 as part of the Internal Revenue Code. The idea was to incentivize drug companies to invest in rare disease research 
because rare diseases affect so few people and can be so variable, there was little incentive prior to this for drug manufacturers to invest in the development of treatments for rare diseases. So there would be, because there was little payoff, um, there was just really little incentive to do that. So the orphan drug tax credit allows manufacturers um, the ability to claim a credit of up to 50% of certain research costs for orphan drugs. And this credit has significantly increased industry investigations and development of treatment for rare diseases over the years. And currently about one third of new drugs that are approved by the FDA each year benefit from this credit and are for orphan drugs um, that have benefited from this credit. So it's something that's incredibly important. There have been discussions about repealing this credit, which would obviously be disastrous for the rare disease community and the DM community specifically, especially as we look to go into clinical trials and we look towards um, the very real possibility of treatments being approved soon. So we officially oppose any movement towards um, repealing the orphan drug tax credit. And we have signed on to uh, signed on to a letter along with NORD and um, over a hundred other rare disease patient advocacy organizations that officially oppose the repeal of the orphan drug tax credit. So if you're in any of these meetings and you get stuck and you, there's a tough question that you're not sure how to answer, just let them know that you'll check with MDF staff and get back to them. And you can follow up with me to have the question answered at any time. And I'll be around the conference as well. So as soon as you get out of those meetings and you get back to the hotel, come find me and we can talk. And after each meeting, um, you'll be given a couple of congressional meeting feedback forms in your packets. So if you could please complete those and um, submit them to me. You can either give them to me during um, the conference or you can email them to me afterwards. And that will just allow me and Molly to follow up with any Capitol Hill staff on any questions that arose during your meetings. And it'll also let us um, follow up with them and, and just let them know a little bit more about myotonic dystrophy and some of the issues that are facing our community. Okay, so um, that's my spiel at this point. I'd like to open it up to any questions and I see that we had a couple already. So just a moment, let me pull those up. Okay, so um, somebody asked the award reception on Thursday evening, September 11th. Um, so all of the award winners currently are planning on being there and we have um, nine policy awards that are going out um, to Senator Amy Klobuchar from Minnesota, uh, Senator Roger Wicker from Mississippi, um, Representative Henry Waxman from California, uh, Sherrod Brown from Ohio, Fred Upton from Michigan, and Tim Kaine from Virginia. And then we have a couple of awards going out to um, like the National Institutes of Health, and a few researchers as well. Um, so currently all of those recipients are planning on being there and we do have meetings scheduled with a couple of them. So we do have a meeting currently scheduled with Amy Klobuchar's office. We have one scheduled with Sharon Brown's office. So we will let you know if the people that you're meeting with got an award the night before that you should mention um, or kind of how all that plays out. We will, I will definitely let you all know that. And yes, you will be receiving um, all these training materials ahead of time via email um, because I, absolutely you should be able to review them and come back with any questions beforehand. Um, so yes, I will be sending out a copy of, um, once I get this webinar edited, I'll be sending out a copy of this to all of you. I'll be sending out as the conference gets closer, um, some of the materials so, so you guys can peruse them as well as um, you know, lists of our asks, and um, you'll also get a copy of anybody who's in your groups going to Capitol Hill. Okay, so next, assuming the staffer um, will at least have awareness of the MD Care Act, they they most likely will know that the MD Care Act exists, but there is not any prep done on their end before advocacy groups arrive. So. Going in, um, that's why you have that folder of yours that you'll be leaving behind with them that has a whole fact sheet on the MD Care Act, on 21st Century Cures. 
it, it's just going to depend on the, the member of Congress and who the staffer is. If they are co-sponsors of the bill, they'll know about it. Um, if they're a member of the Energy and Commerce Committee, they'll know about the bill. They'll know about the 21st Century Cures Initiative. It just depends. So your meetings are going to be about 15 to 20 minutes long. It doesn't leave a ton of time for a lot of background on these bills. So you should assume that they don't know anything about it and just go in and give a quick 30,000 foot overview of the bill um, with you know three or four bullet points about it and just say this is a bipartisan bill. This is a bipartisan initiative uh, spearheaded by, you know, whoever the by um, Senator Amy Klobuchar for the bill or spearheaded by Representative Fred Upton for the 21st Century Cures Initiative. You just want to give a quick overview and then say, and, you know, if you have any questions, more information can be found in this packet and feel free to reach out to um, to the organization with any specific questions about the bill, because they may have questions about, you know, any appropriations. If there's a dollar sign attached to anything, a lot of them will want to know about any of that. OK, so the next question was, if the bill doesn't pass, what are some of the ramifications and um, of that? So if the bill doesn't pass, um, currently it, it'll just be sort of the status quo. So the good news is the MD Care Act passed back in 2001, and the current bill that is before um, Congress is a, they're just amendments to the 2001 bill. Um, so the bill itself is already doing great research for rare diseases and muscular dystrophy. Um, there just won't be any additional, there won't be any additional focus on cardiac and pulmonary research, and there won't be any additional focus on caregiving for adult and transitioning populations. And those are really the big areas that the amendments cover. Um, more likely than not, if the bill does not pass, it will be reintroduced in January. And a bill like this that had wide bipartisan support and a lot a lot of support and that has you know already moved most of the way through one chamber if it just doesn't get around to getting passed for time purposes or because congress hasn't gotten a lot of bills passed this session that's something that very well could be a slam dunk and you know get reintroduced and be um move through congress pretty quickly in the next session so it's not it doesn't mean that research on muscular dystrophy will stop. It doesn't mean that um, that there will really be any negative effects. It just means that the bill itself won't be updated and it won't necessarily reflect the current state of science. Um, and, you know, as as everybody on this call knows and everybody in our community knows, DM especially, there have been just a ton of advances just in the last two or three years. And with us moving to trials, it's really important to keep any legislation that has to do with DM and other muscular dystrophies as up to date as possible um, so that current scientific advances can be, can be reflected and shared. If um, you have any other questions, I'm happy to answer them via email or give me a call at any time. Thank you so much for being part of this webinar, and I will be sending you all these materials out as soon as I get this webinar edited, and you can expect to hear from me a couple of times between now and the conference. And again, I'm just very excited that you're all participating in this, and thank you so much for helping us lead our very first charge on Capitol Hill. <laughs>